We're excited to welcome Daisy Dowling, the author of Work Parent, The Complete Guide to Succeeding on the Job, Staying True to Yourself, and Raising Happy Kids. She's also the founder and CEO of Work Parent, an executive coaching and training firm that supports working parents and the organizations that employ them. Um, I should also say that your book is coming out May 25th. Congratulations, and it's available for pre-order now. Um, we'll get a link to that in the chat. Um, so welcome. It's great to have you with us. And I guess we can start setting the scene by you telling us a little bit about your work and what inspired you to write the book. Sure. So I came to this work and I wrote this book for a really simple reason, which was that I, I needed it both personally and professionally. So for many years, I worked as an executive coach inside some really wonderful, but very demanding organizations filled with men and women who were committed and hardworking and I could give them all kinds of career advice and help them advance and achieve their ambitions, but I couldn't help them out with this other major aspect that they were of their careers and lives they were grappling with, which is how do I fulfill all my professional responsibilities while also taking care of kids at home and being the kind of loving, nurturing, on-the-job parent I wanna be. And I couldn't really find anything that I could provide them. There wasn't sort of a body of wisdom or advice out there that I could hand over. And then of course, when I became a parent nine years ago myself, I found myself grappling with big career decisions, new ways that I had to work. And I, I couldn't find anything. I, I actually put my daughter into the stroller and pushed her down to the Barnes and Noble flagship here in New York City uh, one afternoon and started looking for the one guidebook and I couldn't find it. Very long story short, I started asking other working parents who were sort of together, who seemed on it and said, what advice do you have for me? What do you wish you had known? What are some of the techniques and strategies that you use? And now in my coaching and teaching work and also in the book, I've gathered with a coaching frame on it, you know, with my outlook, with my approach as a coach, but I've gathered all the best kernels of advice that I could find and all the themes and tips that I hear so often from so many parents so that, you know, a mom or dad who wants to succeed at home and on the job can pull that advice down and not incidentally that I can do the same. Hmm. Um, and I think we'll, we'll get to the tips in a moment because we definitely want to dive into that. But obviously this has been kind of a struggle as long as people have been balancing work and life. But I'm interested, what are you hearing specifically about new challenges in the pandemic? How are we at handling this pivot point? Yeah, so struggle is an understatement. We have been through the most difficult, challenging time in most working parents' lives and experiences. It's been exhausting and it's been much longer than we thought. For a long time, what I was hearing and we were all hearing was about the just the day-to-day -day challenge, the logistics. How am I gonna get through this? How am I gonna do what it is that I need to do and sort of keep myself together in the process? Now things have changed. And what I hear from working parents day in, day out, and these are parents who are male, female, in different family structures, in different jobs, they're working remote, they're working on site, everybody is, how am I gonna get myself ready for this quote unquote new normal? So maybe I'll be returning to work or my kid's school will be opening or it will be opening in a different way. There's gonna be a kind of a new set of expectations on me. I'm not sure what it is. And that lack of insight, like what actually is coming and the lack of sense of control. We've all been through this exhausting experience. It wasn't when we chose, we've just had sort of on adrenaline and coffee to get through it, a lot of us. But now we're thinking, oh, and what comes next? And so what I hear is that constant sense of how am, I, how am I gonna get there? Where am I gonna find the energy? And how am I gonna navigate if my employer does tell me that I have to be back X number of days per week and I don't want that. So everyone's facing a lot of uncertainty and a lot of potential decisions coming as well. So much uncertainty. With that being said, do you have anything you can, um, yeah, I don't know, any predictions about how the workplace will transform as we get back to this new normal? Yeah, certainly I, I think we're going to be going into what I call working parenthood 2.0. I don't think it's going to look just like 2019 did. It's not going to be a reversion, but hopefully a step forward. A lot of workplaces will be offering more flexibility and what exactly that looks like in each industry and in each organization we have yet to see. But the important thing now, as I advise my working parent clients, 
is to, to start to build up your own energy, your sense of reserve, what you have to bring at this new problem, instead of being feeling ground down or sort of victim-like to try and get yourself back into the driver's seat. So to you know build your own battery back up, but then also to get real clear with yourself about what it is you want. So when I ask a lot of working parents, they'll say, well, I don't think I wanna go back five days a week, or there are certain things about you know this pandemic experience I don't wanna leave behind family dinner every night with my kids, for example. But in order to self-advocate, in order to try and get to whatever that model is, you have to have a lot of clarity and specificity. What would it look like? What would your ideal look like X number of days per week or the ability to have flexibility of a certain type and then be ready to talk about it in business or organizationally relevant terms in a way that a manager, that leaders at your organization can understand, can buy into and might be able to permission. Super helpful having your vision and then asking for it. I've also heard you talk about the the three legs on the stool. Can you say a little bit about that? Yeah, so as we think about the future of working parenthood and how we just want this to be better, right? I think the genie got let out of the bottle with this pandemic. There's no more denying or turning away from the problem, whether we're working parents or not, we all understand that this is a big issue. 52 million Americans are working parents and they have just been through this incredibly difficult time. But there's three different ways that, or three different levers that we have to help solve this problem or to take steps forward. The first is in policies. So that's things like parental leave, how long people can get off if that's paid or unpaid, whether that's national or whether that's in organizations, but policies, decisions that apply to all of us. The next is programs. So if your employer, for example, has that you know great mentoring program that's parent to parent, well, that's a terrific program that can give you some, you know, support, advice, et cetera, on navigating your life and your career as a working parent. But the third thing, the first two are essential, but the third thing doesn't get as much time or attention, I don't think. And I think that's where we potentially have a lot of lift, a lot of impact that we can get today is thinking about practices. So practices are the things that we do day in, day out, that maybe we don't even think about. It's things like how we talk to as managers or as leaders, how we talk to working parents on our teams, um, how we communicate our working parent needs upwards or to our colleagues, the ways we manage our time. All of those little things that make up the texture and day-to-day of your working parent experience, those are the things that you have the power to think through, to sort through, to change, to adapt right now, even if those policies and programs, while important, are are coming, they're going to begin to catch up. And, you know, we've heard a lot in the news lately, kind of across all of those three pillars, um, that women are being hit much harder. They're more likely to lose income, leave the workforce. People are talking about a Marshall Plan for women. I know you have a different perspective on that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I mentioned there are 52 million of us who are American working parents. Those are you know, adults who are working and who have a child under 18 who they're responsible for, who they're taking care of at home. Now, within that 52 million, it's an incredibly diverse group. So only a quarter of that group is the kind of old traditional, you know, sort of 1950s sitcom style, you know, dad goes off to work, and mom stays at home, that, that type of family where there can be some separation. You're worried about uh, you know, the kids and about getting dinner on the table and about things at home. I can worry about my professional life. That's a minority, that's only 25% of us. Everybody else within the working parent community is uh, either du- dual career couples or single parents. Now I'm not in any way diminishing the struggles which have been very real of sole breadwinner working parents either. But I I share all these statistics just as a way of saying, we are a diverse group. We're men, we're women, we're gay, we're straight. We're parenting older children, parenting teens, which has been incredibly difficult during this pandemic, parenting babies. So as I think about, and as I listen in my coaching sessions to so many parents talk about their lives and experiences, I hear people talk about isolation. I hear them talk about the struggle to deal with elder care while they're also working and parenting. I hear people talk about taking care of children with special needs, which has been an enormous challenge. 
just grappling with an incredible range of different situations, all of which are stressful. So I'm not saying there certainly is important valid data that this pandemic, that this crisis has impacted working moms more, the numbers bear that out, but let's not ignore the magnitude of the problem or the, the complexity of it. It's time for us to think about the totality of working parenthood and not just one group over another. Super important. Women are super impacted, but we do need to take into consideration the diversity of experiences when we're thinking about how to move forward. So let's get into the concrete advice. I was talking to my friend yesterday. I don't have kids myself. She has a one-year-old, a three-year-old. She's a partner at a high-powered law firm telling me that she's at the end of her rope and unraveling. Um, she doesn't care what I have to say. So what are the advice that you can give to working parents? Yeah, the, the, the very first piece of advice that I would give to working parents, if I could give nothing else, it's to take some time to understand your own working parent template. Your working parent template is the collage-like collection of experiences, observations, bits of advice you've got about, gotten about working parenthood over the course of your life that have come together and have formed usually a kind of unconscious view of what you think working parenthood is and means and requires and what good working parents do. So most of the working parents, men and women, again, that I talk to when they say, I'm burnt out, I'm at the end of my rope, when you probe a little bit further, they're usually comparing themselves to this model, this template that they have in mind and they may not be aware of. So let's say your you know, mom was able to work full time when you were growing up, but she was able because of her job and the times that we lived in, you know, pre-smartphone, pre-email at the time, perhaps she was able to come home and cook dinner for you every night. You may have it in your head that good moms cook dinner for their kids or that, you know, good working parents are able to draw very distinct boundaries between work and home life, between their professional and parenting responsibilities. Whatever that set of impressions is, whether it's from your family of origin, media, social media, et cetera, take care to map that out. And then to look at how that template is divergent to your day-to-day -day life. If your friend feels like she's at the end of her rope, she probably also reported feeling guilty or overwhelmed. Part of that is because none of us are saying, you know what, we're not gonna hold ourselves accountable to a pre-pandemic standard. We're not going to look at past generations and say, this is what, you know, how we have to handle working parenthood. We are in crisis mode. We're in a wartime mode. And even in 2019, we had a whole additional set of pressures on, on us. And each and every one of us is living this experience of working parenthood with a unique set of circumstances. So depersonalize it a little bit so that instead of dragging around a bag of rocks of expectations and heavy assumptions, things you're putting on yourself, that you can say, this is my reality and here are strategies for handling it. The second thing, so that's the bigger picture. The second thing I would advise, advise every single person who's working and parenting to do is to think about how to build your village. It's kind of an old you know, expression. It takes a village to raise a child. And Hillary Clinton wrote a book about that 25, 30 years ago. But what they don't tell you is that when you're a working parent, you need a really kind of robust, well-architected village to raise your child. Not every one of us, obviously, is going to have all the help and support and advice and care that we need as we go through our incredibly pressured lives. But we, each and every one of us, owe it to ourselves to think about every bit of help and advice, every shred of additional support that we can get that can give us just that ability, certainly to get through the pandemic and thereafter. So maybe there's a way that your friend can throw her groceries onto an app that does automatic reorder, or maybe a relative who can't visit now because of the pandemic can beam in via Zoom and help her 10-year-old son with his math homework. Maybe that only saves half an hour in her week, but that's half an hour in which she can be focused on other things that are important and take some of the drama a little bit down. So just two different practical and you know, kind of more internal or mindset approaches that are really, really critical community. It's so important. It's such a theme across many speakers we've been hearing from. I want to close. We have a few minutes left. I mean, you said it perfectly. We've been in a war zone for over a year now and everyone's exhausted, beat down, parents or not. And I've heard you talk about this really as a movement. So what's the key here? How do we find the energy to really rise up and make the change that needs to happen? 
Right. So my kids are seven and nine and, you know, I've lived this experience. I wrote the book um, as I was, you know, at the height of the crisis, as I was distance learning with a kindergartner sitting next to me. So we've all been through this incredible time, but here's the deal. When we look forward, each and every one of us, as we look forward and we think about the working parenthood experience that we want our own kids to have when my kid in 20 years from now or more, when my kids are grown, I don't want them to feel like they have to apologize to a manager about the fact that they need to, you know, spend time focusing on their child for the next hour or that they can't, you know, that they're going to be a little bit late for, for the meeting because of a pediatrician's appointment. I don't want them to not have the skill set or the confidence to be able to have a, you know, a direct conversation about maybe the flexibility that they do need. I don't want us to sort of go back to 2019 and think that, you know, as nostalgic as we might be for that time period, you know, pre-pandemic, that we should hang on to it. It's time for us to take a step forward. So draw, I think we can all draw energy from that idea of making a leap now. So that our kids don't look back and say, mom, dad, like you have this crisis, but nothing really changed on the back of it. The status quo has changed and now we can build it back up, starting with ourselves and the individual practices that we have as working parents and as managers and as colleagues and then thinking about our institutions and more broadly about our society. Wonderful, thank you so much for taking us out on a, a note of hope and optimism that we can take this leap forward and you know, make it a better place for our kids in the future, I love that. Well, I think that's all the time we have now, but thank you again for joining us, Daisy, and we'll take it away with Josh to bring you the next Thanks for having me.